it's been a while since we looked back on Dragon Ball Kakumi, but chapter 20 of the greatest fan manga of our time is finally here, and there's a lot going on, so drop a like and don't forget to subscribe for more Dragon Ball content, and let's hop right in. When we last left off in Dragon Ball Kakumi, Bulma has been cornered by Saliga at the orders of Amaran, and now he's separated her from the others. He reaches out his hand to her, but before Saliga can do anything, an energy beam pierces through his head. Kaba warns Saliga don't dare touch Bulma as he flies in already in Super Saiyan 2. Unfortunately, this attack did nothing to Saliga and his wound is already gone. Didn't Kaba's attack do anything to him? It pierced his skull, Caulifla says to herself, but Saliga warns them that he has more than one trick up his sleeve and then turns his attention back to Bulma. All of a sudden, he's sent backwards by some kind of air thrust wave attack as another person has arrived to the battle. Pepino, the Saiyan Tuffle hybrid of Universe 6, appears to protect Bulma as well, only to turn around and get blasted by Saliga right through the stomach. Well, while Pepino lays on the ground dead, Kaba and Kala flip power up angrily and try to attack Saliga from a blind spot, but he raises his hand and punches them both without so much as moving from the spot he stands on. I'm done playing, he tells them, but when we take another look at Pepino, a robotic voice states that the restructuring process is commencing. Even Saliga is shocked as Pepino rises again completely healed, saying that not even they expected that to happen. Being near death has brought Pepino to a new level of strength. Those Saiyan genes are kind of working overtime right now. So you were into magic too, Saliga asks. Fascinating. Although Pepino states that they don't believe in that crap. You're in the land of the highest technology in Universe 6, and I'm gonna prove your tricks don't work on me. The man who has no imagination has no wings, Saliga tells Pepino, who still isn't buying it. Pepino tells the others to get Bulma out of here before clashing with Saliga in the middle of the room. The Saiyans grab up Bulma and fly off, but Saliga is through with the games. He grabs Pepino and tosses the tuffle into the sky straight through the ceiling. As soon as Pepino stops their momentum though, Salaga appears overhead, charging up another attack, daring Pepino to try and stop this with their technology. As the explosion goes off, the Saiyans turn around and Caulifla even asks if they really think a Tuffle can get the better of this guy. Back at the battle though, Pepino realizes that Salaga has been holding back a massive amount and asks why, if he was able to just destroy this whole area with one simple attack. Salaga explains that his mission is Boma and Boma only. He was ordered not to harm any other life. The Saiyans are merely just obstacles in his way prolonging things. All of a sudden, Pepino takes this opportunity and catches Saliga off guard, appearing behind him and puts him in a headlock. The Pepino on the ground was just a hologram this whole time. They nosedive towards the ground primary lotus style, but it seems Saliga was just an illusion this whole time as well. He turns the tables and appears behind and grabs Pepino by the neck. You seem indestructible, Pepino shouts. You leave me no choice. All of a sudden, Pepino summons a whirlwind somehow and breaks free of Saliga's grasp, showing a new advancement in the Tuffle technology, turning their arms into some sort of super weapon. Pepino goes on to explain how growing up amongst the Saiyans of Universe 6 made them feel weak and inadequate. But the brilliance of the Tuffle shone through and Pepino chose to lean completely into their intellectuality. I've worked for years to compensate for this natural gap in strength, and I finally found an alternative. Let me introduce you to my masterpiece, Pepino says, as they unleash their most devastating attack on Saliga. I hope you guys are excited to travel back to Universe 7 after all this time because a lot has happened. Back on planet Lestia, Whis looks more than pleased at the results he's seen. It's been several months since Goten and Trunks began the second stage of their training, and the results are undeniable. It's with a strong will and strong desire to become even stronger that the sons of Goku and Vegeta have finally risen to the rank of God Ki. Super Saiyan God Goten and Trunks have finally been born. In only a few months, they've done it. I sincerely congratulate the two of you on your progress over the last few months, Whis says. Your power is nothing like what you had when you left Earth. In addition, you came close to death on each of your nine attempts. Had you tried one more time, you'd be dead for sure, no matter your training beforehand. This stuns the two boys, but the risk was surely worth the reward for all their treacherous work. Trunks begins to realize just how much blood, sweat, and tears his father put into achieving such a state. Congratulating themselves for achieving such a feat is much deserved, but now, 
They want to go join Vegeta in Universe 6 and fight alongside the rest of the Saiyans. They start making all sorts of plans, but little do they know their training is far from over. Whis continues to walk forward and then asks them, So are you ready for your final test? Wait, wasn't the Super Saiyan God the final step? This is when a giant door all of a sudden appears in front of them and it looks like they've been taken to another dimension altogether. Why are we here, Whis? They ask. Whis explains that it's been just over six months since the Grand Priest's announcement. You now possess God Key and have developed the Super Saiyan God form. However, at your current strength, you wouldn't last a day in the war coming. Wait, are the gods that threaten us really that powerful, Goten asks? Whis replies that since they weren't present during the battle against Zamasu or even the Tournament of Power, their view of reality is skewed to say the least. You two have no idea how powerful your coming opponents will be. Everything should turn out okay though, right? Trunks says. I mean, we have my dad, Majin Buu, Piccolo, Gohan, Seventeen, and even that Jiren guy my dad told me about will be there. But Whis puts things into such a perspective that it stuns them to the core. I estimate it would be quite a feat for Lord Beerus to emerge alive from this, Whis says. Inferiority quickly overcomes Goten and Trunks as they realize if Lord Beerus is fighting an uphill battle, then what chance do they have? Six months ago, you were just average fighters for Universe 7. Now that you've tamed God Key, it's just the beginning of the real thing. I brought you to this place because it's where I've done the majority of my training since my existence began. This place can be likened to what you would call the hyperbolic time chamber, we says. This is a dimension only accessible to those with God Key into which I can take you at will. Only two people at a time besides myself can stay, so I opted for this as your final preparation. Four hours in here will equate to one hour on Earth. This way, instead of a year and a half, you'll have an extra six years in which to train. Get ready, Whis warns them, as this next test won't be anything like the last. Six years is a long time though, and Goten and Trunks can't even imagine being in their 20s when they come out. You too have a part to play in the coming conflict, Whis says to them. You have the fate of your family and friends in your hands. Prove to me that I wasn't wrong to take you on as students. Goten and Trunks step forward accepting the challenge, but for this last test, for them to ascend, they must achieve what their fathers could not, hit him. The boys are shocked at their last test, but Whis assures them that they must surpass themselves and become the ones to save Goku and the multiverse. The takeover of the next generation begins now as Goten and Trunks are guaranteed to surprise everyone when they do finally arrive at that battlefield.